Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen. Hope that you're doing well. It's time for another This Week in Fragrance. We got some really nice fragrances coming up here, some tasty releases. We got a new Dracar, a new Aqua de Jo, new Zadig and Voltaire, and also a new Lacoste L1212. So let's jump into it. Let's break down these new fragrances so you can see what you have to look forward to in the near future and right now. You could actually order some of these right now. Let's kick it off with the new Lacoste L1212 Blanche or White Eau Fraiche. Obviously, you can tell that this is their best seller as far as the L1212 line goes because there are a whole lot of other colors that they've done out there. Yellow, black, red, green, blue, but they keep coming back to white over and over. Now this fragrance, even though it was just announced, you can buy already. I actually have already ordered it and I think it was um, Macy's that had it. Feel the energy of Lacoste with the L1212 Blanc Fraiche Eau de Toilette. This sparkling men's fragrance is released in an invigorating blast where the lemon zest wins with the powerful notes of ginger, lavender, and cedarwood. An explosion of vitality, providing an exhilarating comfort. Reinvent the rules of the game, free to move with assurance thanks to the unexpected lightness of this woody aromatic scent. An explosion of vitality. Just like when you take Viagra. <laughs> this fragrance has top notes of ginger, grapefruit, and lemon, mid of apple, juniper, and lavender, base of vetiver, cedar, and ambroxan. Which looking at that note breakdown, it's almost like the perfect note breakdown for a bluish type of uh, sporty summer scent. We got the ginger and the citrus combination in the opening, little apple in the mid to give it additional fruitiness, but with a little slight tweak. We've got juniper and lavender, which both often come across very fresh and brisk. And then in the base, ambroxan with modern woods, I'm assuming is how that's gonna come across. So as I said, I have already ordered it. So hopefully I'll have that in soon and I can let you guys know what I think about it. It just did pop up for sale. And I think it was uh, something like $83 US retail for a 100 mil size bottle. So not that bad. Pricing on designers, they've been going up. So at least that was not crazy expensive. Up next, we have a new Dracar from Guy La Roche. Now you may or you may not know, but I love Dracar Noir. Now this is technically a flanker of Dracar, which came out before Dracar Noir. Dracar Noir is just a flanker after all, but still anything new in that Dracar line, you know I'm pumped. And hopefully it's good, right? Right, it's called Dracar Intense. Daring to spread an irresistible and addictive power, Dracar Intense embodies a greater thirst for danger, man. That's lost in translation. <laughs> Dracar Intense embodies a greater thirst for danger, man. Wait, who's danger, man? <laughs> Me, I'm fucking danger, man. The fragrance explores the depths of Dracar with new oriental accords, immediately releasing pungent notes of bergamot while aromatic sage, warm suede, and vanilla exalt the daring sensuality that inhabits him. Just as one is drawn to the intoxicating glow of the fire, a fragrance of unique seduction for an exhilarating impression of attraction, threat, and power. Let's get it. So this one, it's got a lot going on. It's got danger man, it's got threat, power, attraction, sensuality, intoxicating fire. So this one has a top of bergamot, absinthe, or wormwood, coriander, and rosemary, mid of lavender, clary, sage, and juniper, and a base of patchouli, vanilla, suede, and moss. So this one, obviously, I'm going to pick up, like, that fast. I'm gonna pay retail for it. It doesn't matter what retail is, assuming that retail's not $500, which it shouldn't be because it's Guy La Roche, which is cheap. This should hypothetically hit discounters and be quite affordable when it does because, um, Dracar, it's cheap. But I'm really interested to see how close this is to the original Dracar or to my beloved Dracar Noir. Mm. Now let's talk about the biggest release in this video, the new Giorgio Armani Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum. I just did a live stream about a week ago with the Beast Mode gents, uh, my channel members, and one of the guys asked me, do you think there will be an Aqua de Jo flanker this year? This was before 
this fragrance was announced and I said, yeah, absolutely. At this point, Giorgio Armani is putting out Aqua de Jo flankers until the end of time. As long as people are buying them and, and spending big money to pick up everyone and you know complete the Aqua de Jo collection, you better believe they're coming out with one every year. And then lo and behold, right afterwards, Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum. Now, when I look at the bottle for Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum, it reminds me of Aqua de Jo Essenza, only with a different cap. Essenza had a nice magnetic cap, which you don't really find on Aqua de Jo fragrances anymore, unfortunately. But the bottle looks really similar to Essenza. Only now, it comes with a dark wooden cap, which looks a little bit like the Absolute cap only black. Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum. This new Eau de Parfum contains a powerful marine freshness in which innovative marine notes mix with natural green mandarin, aromatic essences, and a woody mineral trail. The infinite power of the sea is captured in an innovative new refill bottle, which actually that is one of the things that they're pushing now is that this is a refillable bottle. So in, in essence, I guess you could just buy the bottle, use it all up, and then instead of buying a new bottle, you buy the refill and just refill your existing bottle and toss the refill. The new fragrance opens with an acidic green mandarin, a radiant and emblematic note that evokes the Mediterranean origins of Giorgio Armani, sustainably sourced and grown for Giorgio Armani. Clary Sage from Provence is blended with fresh lavender and geranium from Madagascar. The patchouli is from Guatemala. Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum, a perfume for the future. It is a perfume that thinks about the planet and shares the values of the new generations. From the sustainable design of its bottle to the possibility of infinitely refilling it. From its sustainably sourced natural ingredients to the perfume's commitment to protecting Guatemala's forests. Environmental awareness is the cornerstone of Aqua de Jo de Parfum. Uh, the new bottle has a sustainable design that reduces the use of plastics thanks to its new European wooden cap of sustainable origin. Infinite refills, infinite freshness. So the note breakdown as we know it right now, citrus, uh, aquatic notes in the top, clary sage, lavender, geranium in the mid, patchouli in the base. Now, as far as how this actually smells, I'm really interested to see if they take uh, the, the more typical Eau de Parfum approach, which is what you saw with Dior Sauvage or Versace Eros or Bleu de Chanel or any of those releases where you have uh, the original Eau de Toilette, then an Eau de Parfum, and then maybe down the road a Parfum. I'm wondering if that's what they're gonna do here. So if they follow that path, then it would mean this is going to smell quite similar to the original Aqua de Jo Eau de Toilette, only I'm sure modernized quite a bit because the original came out in 96, but uh, a lot like the original Aqua de Jo, only deeper and richer and smoother, maybe not quite as uh, heavy on the top notes. They do say a number of times that that this is a very fresh uh, fragrance. I mean, infinite freshness, they say. I mean, that, that goes on forever. So I would imagine they're not gonna, you know, take this too far away from what Aqua de Jo is and what everybody knows Aqua de Jo to be, which is spring, summer, daytime, uh, office safe, casual, big time compliment puller, you know, that kind of deal. Uh, I imagine they're gonna keep it right in that path based off what they've said. The biggest change from this note breakdown would appear to be the mid, lavender geranium and clary sage, at least if we compare it to the original Aqua de Jo. In actuality, you can find sage uh, geranium and lavender used across multiple Aqua de Jo's, but to my knowledge, not in the same one. So in some Aqua de Jo's, you'll find lavender, some you'll find geranium, some you'll find sage, some you'll find like two of those three notes. It's just kind of uh, depending on the fragrance and the line that you're looking at. So overall, that, that mid keeps it with Aqua de Jo. These are notes that have been used across different fragrances in the line, but I think it's the first time that they've been paired up together in the official note breakdown. Regardless of, of all of that, it should be out soon. 
So keep your eyes open at Georgie Armani's website, Macy's, you know, all these websites should be available soon. And let me know in the comments if you think this is going to be what I said. Though I'm just pushing the eau de toilette to an eau de parfum and then a parfum a little bit down the road and then maybe something even past that, you know, some hyper concentrated aqua de that comes in a little bottle and costs $200. You do that whole Sauvage route, you know, take that page from the Dior playbook. Regardless though, I'm very much looking forward to it. Aqua de Joe is a fragrance line that is very important to me in my whole fragrance journey. I still love this stuff. And let's wrap it up with Zedek and Voltaire. This is him vibes. American flag, bald eagle, drugs, hamburgers. A wind of freedom and freshness blows on this is him. Zedek and Voltaire's new eau de toilette for men created by Natalie Lorson. Okay. It delivers a fresh and aromatic shot of positivism, po positivism overflowing with good vibes. An energetic and woody fragrance, an aromatic and tangy trait delivered by energetic lavender and effervescent mandarin. Cardamom notes are captured in a swirl of incense for an explosive spicy feel. A powerful trail of patchouli and cedar composes vibrant memories. So this is him vibes of freedom top notes of lavender and mandarin made of cardamom and incense and a base of cedar and patchouli zadig and voltaire in general make fragrances that are really nice the quality is there quality is good so i'm sure i'll pick this one up as soon as i see it as soon as it's available it's like pokemon gotta catch them all this one obviously keeping that incense that smoke that you see used across most of the line although it does read like a much more fresh and uh, vibrant type of fragrance. So we'll see how that works together. I'm assuming that the incense in here is not going to be that heavier, very smoky, churchy type of incense. Instead, I'm assuming the incense is going to be more along the lines of what you would find in something like Versace Dylan Blue, where yeah, it's incense, but it's not like incense. So there we go. Four new releases. What are you most pumped for? Probably the Aqua Du Jo. Me? Yeah, the Aqua de Joe. And also the Dracar. <laughs> All right, guys, let me know in the comments, like I said, what you're interested in. And also, if you think Aqua de Joe is following in the footsteps of the brands and the fragrances that have come before it. Aqua de Joe Parfum, are you coming? I think you might be. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.